Welcome everyone and thank you for coming. We are really pleased today to have with us blockbuster best-selling author Dennis Lehane. No one describes the culture's underbelly quite like our author today. Please welcome Dennis Lehane. Hi. I, I wanted, I think the title uh, it actually encapsulates what I actually wanted to say, which is it's a book about um, the, the 1920s. And the 1920s to me are the sexiest decade America ever had. Because what happened was they came in in January of 1920 and they said, we're taking away all your alcohol, you can't drink. And America said, mm. <laughs> we beg to differ. So you had an entire country that said, as of this moment, we're going to ignore the law of the land. And what that did was it had all sorts of unintended consequences. The uh, woman, women's movement accelerated like no time until the 1960s. It exploded. Women said, well, if we're going to ignore the fact that we can't drink and just drink anyway, we're also going to ignore all those silly laws about where our hemlines stop, whether we can smoke, whether we can go out into bars. You had one of the coolest decades ever for clothes. Like, I would kill to be able to dress like people dressed in Prohibition. That would just, the hats, just having a hat. The cars were gorgeous. You had just all these wonderful, the, the explosion of jazz. And I just think, what, how cool would it have been to turn to your friend and say, oh, by the way, we're going to meet tonight at such and such basement place behind the dry cleaners, and the, and the password is swordfish. And you showed up there that night, and everybody was in there. I mean, that just had to be, it had to give everything this incredibly sexy flavor. That's what I kept thinking when I was coming up with this book. The only problem was, all I was going to do at that point, as I could see it, was write a book that was an homage. It was just saying, wasn't it cool to be in the 20s? Wasn't it really cool to have a Tommy gun? And I couldn't see, like, I can do that with you right now. But I don't think that's worth 27 bucks, right? So I, I said, um, I need something different. I need something that we haven't seen before. And it just seems like everything's kind of been done. And I went, this is the book. This is the book. It's about rum. Nobody does rum. Everybody does whiskey. Boardwalk Empire is whiskey. Uh, the Untouchables is whiskey. The, what you think of when you think of gangster books is whiskey. And I had said from the beginning, I wanted to do something sexy. And to me, Latin culture is really sexy. So I said, OK, here I have this great sweeping book that will take place in an area of the country that nobody even knows about that was like Casablanca. So I just said, I'm going to write in a way my sort of Casablanca. I'm going to fill it with Cuban revolutionaries and radicalized union workers and bootleggers and gangsters and thieves and, and everybody just having the time of their lives in the 1920s. And so that is the book before you. And hopefully you'll, you'll feel that excitement come through the page and it's got bloodshed and bullets flying and music coming out of all and smoke-filled rooms and not one, two romances. Hopefully you can, you can smell the rum and you can hear the music and you can enjoy the books. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. You're an amazing writer. Of all of the millions of things that you could write about. Yes. Why crime? Um, well, I grew up in a really a tough working class neighborhood. And so you grew up in a tough working class neighborhood, there's a reason they say it's tough. You see a lot of violence. So I've always been fascinated with violence. Why we do it, when it's an acceptable, necessary evil, when it is not. What are the prices of it? Because what I would see, the myth of violence in American movies has always been that you, you, the good guy can punch another guy in the face and the, and the guy curls up and realizes his wrongs and then the good guy walks away and nobody ever bothers him again. In reality, what I always saw was whenever that happened, that guy and his family would wait a couple of months, and then they'd stab that guy in the back somewhere in an alley or something. It just, it never goes away. Violence regenerates, and it never ends. And so when I started to begin to write, I understood that in crime fiction, something bad had to happen at the beginning. And at the end, there had to be some kind of reckoning with that event. And that was the only rules. But that gave me a skeleton. It gave me a road map. I said, I can follow that map. And and that's how I ended up writing in crime fiction, for lack of a better word. Um, Elizabeth. Yes. yes. So several of your books have been made into films. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious as to what the process is like, because you didn't write any of those screenplays. No. Having someone take your characters and write for them. This is what I control when I sell to the movies, and I'm very aware of it. I control who I sell it to. Right up until the moment I let it out of my hands, I don't have to let it out of my hands. No matter what they throw at me, there's no law. So I am actually really picky about who I sell to. 
Once I've agreed to sell to you, though, however, that means I respect you as an artist. And that has always been my playbook. I owe you the respect of getting the hell out of your way. Simple as that. And so what I do whenever I sell my work to Hollywood is I say, here's my cell phone, here's my email. Contact me if you need me. If you don't, I'm fine. I'm great. So my relationship with Hollywood has worked really well on those so far now. I've had three really good adaptations. I've been involved in every single one of them, but only because they asked me. I didn't bug them. Um, so that's, that's been a great experience. I've had a great love affair with the three films that were made in my books. I don't have a bad word to say about any of them, so they're good, good movies. Thank you so, so I, much. For oh, coming. thank you. We have absolutely loved having you here. Okay. Great stories, great book, and um, you've, done us, you've done us a good turn here. Well, thank you all. So thank you very much. Hobo. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So.